Hey everybody, my name is Ian. I work at the Fort Worth Public Library in the Panther Lab Makerspace. Due to COVID-19, we've had to move our Maker Showcase to the second Saturday of every month online instead of in person, but I think that brings a better eye and perspective on things. Today, I'm joined by Stephanie Bergeron of Deliberately Creative, and she's going to talk to us about her maker talent and her maker skill. Hi, Stephanie. How are you doing today? Hi, Ian. I'm doing really well. I'm excited to be here. Good. I'm so glad that you're joining me and I can't wait for you to talk about your maker skill and activity. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. What do you do as a maker? Oh my gosh. What don't I do as a maker? <laughs> I have been a maker all of my life. I started very young. My father had the uh, great foresight to say that everyone needs to be able to uh, change a tire do the oil change in a car and to build things. And he was always down in the basement building, tinkering, making art. And so I learned from a really young age how to work with silver and how to uh, do scrimshaw, which is a type of engraving on ivory and then putting ink on it to make the picture show up. It's like really old style art that the uh, guys on ships, when they were out whaling, they would have all this ivory tusk stuff laying around. And so they spent time doing that. So I learned pen and ink really very, very young. And that was one of the things that I did. Uh, so I am a pen and ink artist. I am a painter. I am a, um, I've built musical instruments, uh, harps, drums. I even built a guitar and a fiddle. So wow, I'll that's do, really impressive. I'll do just about anything. That's really cool. Wow, that's, uh, that's awesome. Now, I know you from YouTube, and I've watched some of your videos. You've done a, a, quite a few different things on YouTube. You want to talk about some of the, some of the artistic expressions that you've done? Oh, right. So my YouTube channel, I have been doing since November of 2015, sharing step-by-step step how to do art, how to do anything pretty much. We've done handmade books to splashing acrylic paint around, pouring it all over everything and letting it run off, to doing the colored pencils and even using um, the pen and ink and colored pencils together to do things like doodle gems, that uh, sort of zen doodle pattern type of stuff. Um, but really what I do is I teach people how to be creative and how to access the creativity that's already inside them because everyone knows how to draw, even if they say they don't, because if you started writing your name, you've been drawing. As soon as you started writing your name, you were drawing things, you were drawing letters, you were drawing symbols that mean something. And when you're drawing a flower, you're drawing a symbol that means something. That's all it is. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of people, whenever they come into the maker space, or when I talk to them about creativity, they tell me, oh, I'm not very creative. I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to do this. What would your response be to them? that you've been doing it all your life and you just haven't given yourself credit for knowing that you already know it. And um, we put such a, um, a mystique around things like drawing. Um, it's just a skill that is the same as tying your shoes. Your fingers have to know how to do a movement. You don't even think about tying a bow anymore. You tie your shoes. Okay. But some people, they're like, I can't hold a pencil and draw something because I haven't been taught how to do that. Well, actually, you have. So it's, I try to make things as um, not scary and not, uh, you, not high pressure. So that's why I call my, my drawing lessons and my painting lessons, we're doodling. Because doodling is drawing without any pressure. You sit on the phone and you doodle, right? You don't think about it. You're just doodling. You're just making squares and circles and triangles. And maybe you'll go over something many, many times. You'll draw a couple little flowers and you've been doodling. 
that's all I do is I show people those same motions that you're already doing mindlessly, you can start doing with a little bit of purpose and a little bit of direction and you end up with something so much better than you ever thought you could do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of us have been doodling a lot more since COVID-19 happened and we're, we're on these online calls and we're on these, mm -hmm. these, we're separated in, in our houses and in our, in our spaces. Absolutely. I know that I've been, you know, during a meeting, I'll sit there and, and doodle on a notepad as I listen to what's going on. And I've heard, and I don't know if this is a hundred percent true. I feel like it is that we listen more actively when we're doodling rather than engaging on Facebook or playing on our cell phones or doing something like that. We actually learn more and hear more when we're doodling as we're listening. That is absolutely true. Um, there have been many studies, um, mostly in Europe, because uh, just that's where the funding for these studies are, and in the UK, where uh, they will have somebody do um, some type of task. And then they will, uh, and they'll have like a couple people doing it. Then they'll have one that goes over and just sits and plays on their phone for 15 minutes. And one that will listen to somebody talking and they'll just doodle. They'll just, does, no direction, just put the paper to the, and pencil together and just doodle. And then they will bring them back to do this totally disassociated task. And the person who was doodling, their brain is active and they are able to more quickly do the task than the person who was sitting and mindlessly flipping through pictures or whatever doing social media. So the area of your brain that is activated by drawing is um, keeping your brain active. Yeah. where the area of your brain that's looking at social media going by is passive. Yeah, so. that's, I, I think, uh, I think that really kind of gives insight. Not only is it a maker skill to doodle, but it's also a learning tool that you can use if, yes. you, if you feel stuck or, or whatever. That's really cool. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about your background because you kind of talked about it a little bit, but you didn't go to school for art, did you? No. No, I was just raised in a family that uh, valued creativity and art, um, valued the individual to make decisions for themselves and to grow. So I was given access to tools, access to materials from a very young age because I showed an interest in doing that. But I also cook and I also garden and I also you know, so there's all of these different things that are creative. Putting together a recipe is very creative. Absolutely. <laughs> Laying out a garden is very creative. So I, I let creativity sort of flow into all parts of my life. And by being raised the way I was, I was raised to be able to allow myself the room to say, oh, I've never done that before. Let's try it. Yeah. And, you know, go, oh, that's very similar to this thing I did over here many years ago. And I can take that knowledge that I've gained over here and apply it to a new situation. And really, I think that is the core of being creative. Absolutely. Is being able to take previous information and skill sets and transfer them into a new area that you enjoy because as soon as you enjoy it your mind is attached to it and you're going "Ooh, that you know release those great endorphins in my brain oh that made me feel good to have this painting show up at the end of a class you know yeah absolutely the, you know having a um sitting out camping and having paint with me and being able to do something like this. Oh, wow. This is just a piece of black watercolor paper and gouache. And I painted directly without doing any drawing because I was just doodling. I just doodled it. I was not 
didn't know for sure what I was going to do. It was like, ooh, how about a lantern? We've got lanterns while we're out camping. And, oh, moths like lanterns. And so, you know, but that's previous knowledge. You know, yeah. previous knowledge applied to something totally different than watching a moth around a lantern to painting it on a piece of paper. But it's still applying previous information to a new situation. And that's really, I think, my definition for creativity. Yeah, absolutely. I so, think a lot of people get confused whenever we say, uh, you know, whenever they say they're not creative. I always, and I've talked about this on the Maker Showcase uh, before with some of my other guests, but, you know, they get discouraged because they can't draw or they get discouraged because they can't paint or they get discouraged because yeah. they can't program. But it's, you mentioned it, uh, you know, cooking is another way to be creative. Oh yeah. Cooking is creative. Program is crea programming is creative. I actually went, I did go to college. My college uh, education is in um, computer programming and data processing. I worked for 20, almost 24 years in education as a computer technology support specialist. So, and people are like, well, how did you do that for almost 25 years when you're so creative? It's like, oh, dude, you don't understand. Being a tech, you have to be creative. You have to be able to creatively take a problem, break it down, and find a way to get that piece of equipment running again for the person who needs to be doing the presentation or for the student that needs to get their iPad back on the network so that they can get their homework done so they can get it turned in and not, you know, fail their class or whatever. Uh, so it's, again, you learn previous information, you apply it to new situations. Yeah, definitely. A lot of times I think of programmers as being very creative because they are literally creating apps and creating uh, programs and creating websites. And a lot of times they'll run into problems where they, they have something that they want to try and do with that app or that program, and they have to be creative with their solution and figure <laughs> out how to work yeah. around all these different factors. So yeah, a lot of times IT and programmers and, and a lot of different people in the technical field get very creative with some of their solutions. Yeah, and you'll find that a lot of people that are in the tech fields actually are artists also. They, and many of them may not know that they are artists because they think, well, an artist uses paint or an artist has to be a sculptor. They have, you know, just as everyone, you have preconceived notions of what art is. Absolutely. And, you know, art is just anything that makes your world more beautiful. Yeah. And a lot of times people also um, don't think about all the art the, that goes into creating such things as applications on phones. If it's not a, a user-friendly or good user graphical interface, mm -hmm. uh, graphical user interface, sorry, let me get that yeah. correct. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not an app people want to use. Well, yeah, things people don't understand that a lot of what we don't, what, what we discount is the aesthetics of something. And the aesthetics are the art or Absolutely. is the art. Art is multiple. So is, is the art, are, are the pieces of art, are the, is the pieces of art, you know, I can go on about <laughs> This could turn into a whole conversation. We're not going to grandma. Uh, grandma? <laughs> We're not going to grandma to get a grammar lesson. <laughs> there's there's uh, so many different ways that this conversation could could diverge. And it's, yeah. it's really cool. That's one of the things that I'm enjoying about these interviews is we do almost get into this, this um, uh, psychology and, and all sorts of different uh, conversations that go in different directions. But I do want to rein it back a little bit. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit more about, um, so you showed off a, a piece there just a moment ago, it said peace on it. Um, yeah. And it, it, you know, I, I, those letters look like something I could draw. And I'm not a very good artist, but I could definitely do that. And I think that's something, it's something about simplistic and and yeah and maybe not necessarily easy but there's something about that aesthetic do you want to talk a little bit more about that well the ability to break things down so this is the full alphabet 
for that piece of artwork. And I did this in a live class on YouTube, on my YouTube channel this morning, even. And I showed in about 45 minutes, 26 letters and two punctuation marks, specifically how to easily do it with, you know, taking a pencil and drawing your stick letters and then going around it to make these fun bubble type letters, almost, almost graffiti style, almost balloon style, could go all those different ways. And being able to break things down into simple, easy, step-by-step, -step, it's number one, do this, number two, do that, and number three, put the little highlight marks on. And it's a three-step for each, each one of those letters. But then when I did this, it was, I drew the, drew the letter block letter, did the bubble letter around it, took off the uh, pencil, and then said, oh, you know, that really looks like I could put trees inside there and make that piece a very peaceful scene. But those are doodled trees. And I showed step by step how to do the doodle trees. And it was draw a line and draw little fans of triangular fans of little lines. And that's all it is to make those trees. So if you. Yeah. Looks very, yeah. it looks very simple and very clean. Very clean, very simple, very easy. And I even showed how to do that quick. I mean, the background was like a 30 second background. Wow. That's just get the paper wet and brush across with one color, leaving white, yeah. leaving the white of the paper and letting the, letting the paint just, okay, we're going to use a technical term, use capillary action with the water to bleed out and get that lovely soft effect. That's really cool. That's very, very cool. You know, so simple techniques. And step by step, when you break things down one step at a time, you can make huge masterpieces. And what is it, the, the old saying of uh, how do you eat an elephant? One bite, <laughs> one at, bite a at a time. Uh, you don't, you know, how do you draw a house one line at a time? You know, how did you tie your shoes? one step at a time yeah absolutely. so you know that's that's really where my all that's where my direction is when i'm helping people learn how to use their own creativity is showing them that when you break it down step by step it's not scary it's not magic it's just a technique it's and a pencil is just a tool and a pen is just a tool and pens don't have to be scary because if you put a line that's not where you want the line, it's just a line that you haven't figured out how to use yet. Yeah, absolutely. You know? That's really cool. That's, and that's what I do with, with my pen and inks. If I get a line that goes woo, way out there into Wonderland, I just have to figure out a new way to use that line because I'm not going to erase it. It's permanent ink. Just got to get creative so, with it. You just get creative with it. And you Absolutely. just give yourself permission to not be tied to your first idea of how something is going to look. Excellent. Excellent. You talked a little bit about it in the beginning of our interview that your dad was really inspirational to you yes. and kind of really put you on that path towards uh, being creative and creating art. Are there mm -hmm. other people that you uh, have either interacted with or look up to in, in the art world or even just in general? Oh, well, when I got to high school, the art teacher in the high school, Mr. Jolliver, he was actually my dad's art teacher when he was in high school. So like the first year that the high school was opened, Mr. Jolliver had been hired and that was the first year my dad went to the same high school that I went to. So um, Mr. Jolliver had known my family 
for years. And so he was very instrumental in giving me room to do whatever I wanted to in art. Uh, I was in a regular, you know, just art class. Everybody else in the art class was doing what, you know, the lesson. And I was basically an independent study artist from uh, sophomore year through senior year. So I just, I had to be assigned to an art class, but then I got to do whatever I wanted. And I basically made my own curriculum because I, I would tell the teacher, okay, I want to do this. And then he would say, all right, these are the tools you need. And if you have any questions, come and ask. And then I got to go and play. I got to go and explore. Um, currently, artists that are really influential or very um, uh, Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa that you've had on your on your show before, she is uh, she's really a mentor to me in my business side of things and my um, how to run my YouTube channel, how to. Uh, work on those types of skills. She has been hugely instrumental in helping me with those types of things. And she's, she's become a dear friend uh, because of that. But we met because of art. We met because of uh, this wonderful world of the internet. Because in real life, I hadn't met her. It, it was like two years before I had met her in real life. So uh, that was, you know, she's, she's very instrumental in thing, you know, in helping me to grow that side. Um, my husband is, he is uh, someone who came to art a lot later. He didn't actually start doing anything really artistic. He had the ability. He always had the ability, but he would just say, oh, well, you're the artist. You're the artist. It's like, well, no, honey, you're, the, you're an artist also. And so I got him into photography first. And he learned about the rule of thirds and about color composition and about all of this neat stuff out there. But he was using the camera. And so he didn't think that was art. But then he started, he found the art Sherpa also, and he started doing her lessons. He started doing her tutorials. And then he was like, oh, those things you've been telling me. Oh, that's what you meant. Very cool. Now he's finished like two years of a daily art practice where he's been doing painting a day, um, you know, or a year and a half he did it. He did it for a whole year and a half. Every single day he did a piece of art he painted. Wow. And he's, so he's very inspirational to me in that, you know, he's, you can see the growth in when somebody spends, you know, 15 minutes to an hour a day doing something, you get better at it. Absolutely. Um, and then there's a ton of artists out in the world that I just, I'm one of those people that I go, Ooh, I like that art. Ooh, I like that artist. What's their name again? Trying to remember their name. But, you know, I love their art and I know I love their art. And that, you know, I don't, I did that with music too. I would love a song. I would not know who sang it. It's just the way my, my brain works. It's like, okay, I, I can appreciate the beauty. I can appreciate the um, concepts. But I'm not going to remember the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just not the way, not the way I'm wired. Yeah, same here. I have trouble. I'm, I'm wired visually. Yes, absolutely. I I agree with that. And my brain definitely works more visual than it does. I can't remember people's names to save my life. In fact, what was your name again? No, I'm kidding, Stephanie. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, but so um, as people start their maker journey, maybe they're watching this video and they're like, well, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can <laughs> start on an art journey or start to practice more. What advice would you give to somebody who's wanting to start on that art journey and, and take it on full force? Pick up a pencil and a piece of paper. Truthfully, at the beginning, every single art media starts with an idea, 
So start getting your ideas on paper and they don't have to look pretty. They don't have to be finished drawings, but they can be, you know, it's like, I have an idea. I want to do a vase of flowers. Well then start, start with um, drawing circles, drawing squares, start laying a square on top of a circle to change the shape. Just like, just like that. You know, it's a circle. There's some little, they would be like squares or rectangles underneath and then just sloping off the edge. So you can do things in a step-by-step, -step, small steps, and then you'll start seeing your skills improve. So I just released a video um, on my channel. It's deliberately creative on YouTube. And I just released a video on Monday that was uh, tips from an artist on how to become a better artist, how to draw better. And it's five tips that if you just do five minutes a day, you're going to be a better artist in all fields of art. You're going to be a better uh, drawer, <laughs> drawer, drawist whatever, you're going to be a better artist. <laughs> you're going to get sure. the things down on paper. And it doesn't take um, having the most expensive sketchbook. It doesn't take getting the high quality best pens that you have to fill with a little squeezy bottle into a... Get any old pen. Okay, this pen is a cardboard tube, guys. This is a cardboard tube with a pen on the inside. It even uses a cardboard tube for a lid. I mean, it's 50 cents. It's my favorite pen. <laughs> so, you know, find the tools that you will use. Don't get the expensive th stuff and then sit there and go, oh, that's too precious. Oh, no. Oh, I, I no, I can't put anything in that book. That's no, that's for when I can be an artist and do a really good job on that piece of art. It's like, no, get yourself the $5 sketchbooks, the blank page books at the, at, the, um, at the craft store where they will have, you know, like right after the new year, they might even have them two for $5 <laughs> or right at school time going in. A lot of times you'll find the blank books or the little dot grid books. Just get a whole bunch of cheap ones. Go to the dollar store, get some cheap paper. Things that you don't mind, just drawing all over and that you don't have to have be precious. Um, that really is the best way to get started is a pencil, a pen, an eraser, and some paper. And you can even write on the back of um, recycled, the recycle box. Go and grab stuff out of the recycle box. Use envelopes. Use... Uh, the backside of those letters where they're trying to get you to sign up for something because they'll print on one side and they don't print on the other side because that would be more expensive. So but you've got all this blank paper. <laughs> Grab a ballpoint pen. <laughs> as long as the ink flows out of it, if you're having to sit there and struggle with it, toss it. Go to get something that the ink flows out of or that the pencil lead doesn't snap every time you put the pencil down to the paper. Yeah. That's, that's where I'd go. That Absolutely. truthfully, that is how, that's how engineers become engineers. That's how um, artists learn to draw. That's how sculptors learn to sculpt. You have to know how to just get the idea out of your head and onto something outside of you. And then you can start working on building it into something bigger. Even if you want to learn how to fold a book, you know, how do, how do you fold a piece of paper to make a little book? That's something you could sketch on a piece of paper. You can sketch a rectangle and say, I'm going to fold the book in quarters, both directions, and then learn how to, you know, where do I put the lines so my book doesn't fall apart when I cut it? Absolutely. I'm not really, I'm not taking that piece of that drawing, that sketch, and making that into my book. I'm taking another piece of paper. <laughs> and folding it into a little book. I yeah. mean, this is just one, this, oh, talk about recycle box. Okay. This is out of the recycle box. There you go. But I've got all these pieces of paper now 
that I can do little doodles and sketch in. You know, you, I, I, I keep these things around because I never know when I'm going to have an idea and go, oh, what was that? Oh, yeah, I could do something like, hmm. There it is. I'm going, I have one sitting here. This is because I'm sitting in my studio. So I did, I did lessons. I don't know. Oh, wow. I did lessons and I used this little book. So when I, I'll, I'll lay it out flat and then I'll bring it back up to the camera. Ah, get open. There we go. So. Oh, wow. So all of those, but then you can flip it the other way because this is blank paper. All of those are pages. See? That's very cool. And it just, all of those are pages in a book. Yeah. But they're just, it's one piece of paper that's been folded into a, into a little book. I'm, I'm not going to feel bad that I just scribbled on one piece or that I drew just a random something on one piece because I drew, you know, pictures on other pages. Well, I and, do, you and know. And it's the perfect size to just pop in your pocket and take along with you. There you go. Whoops. Come on. <laughs> there we go. It's like the lighting in here for this camera. Um, but yeah, so it's the perfect size to be able to just... There. All the ice cream. Easy. So these were all lessons that I did on my channel and showed people how... And it's different lessons. Mm -hmm. Different ones. So... I didn't do all of these in one set, you know, do one, do, yeah. do some watermelon, you know, draw a triangle and then put little seeds on it. You've got a watermelon. Absolutely. Yeah. Start and off that's simple. what we need to need to remember. Things can be very simple, very clean, very mm -hmm. easy. If you take it one line at a time and don't feel precious about the materials. That's good advice. That's good advice because I definitely am guilty of hoarding materials or, or not wanting to, to use something because it's precious to me. So that's, that's good advice to, to work with uh, cheaper materials and stuff that you don't, don't feel as uh, guarded on. So I think that's some really good advice, especially for, for people just getting into it. Stephanie, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, jump on here on the Maker Showcase. Uh, just as a quick reminder for everyone, you can check her out on her social media, which is at Deliberately Creative on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and Deliberately Creative uh, deliberately hyphen creative.com for my website where I do uh, little lessons in a kind of a blog form website web page type form and then I also have my YouTube channel deliberately creative and I have been teaching for over five years people who want to learn how to do things in a simple and straightforward way Excellent. Excellent. The, the internet is wonderful because there's so many great free resources out there. So make sure to check out Stephanie. And of course, you can check out other resources at the Fort Worth Public Library's website. We have plenty of resources for you to check out. And of course, you can talk to your favorite librarian as well, who can point you in the right direction for some great art books. Stephanie, thank you for joining me today. And uh, we'll hope to see everybody really, really soon. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone.